Uh, what does it mean to get life from God, and how do we do it? I talk all the time about getting our life from God. And this person says, I don't quite know what that means, and I don't quite get how you, the use of imaginative spirituality helps us get it. And that question came out in a number of different ways. One person saying this, uh, I know that I'm supposed to get all my life from God, but I always find, if I'm honest with myself, that things mean too much to me. What people think about me is too important. I, it determines a lot of my disposition. The things I own, the things I possess. Uh, I know that I am guilty of idolatry, but how do I stop? I want to stop, I try to stop, but I always fall back into this. How can this animate series, how can imaginative spirituality help us get free from that? This is so central. This is absolutely central to everything. Because the kingdom is first and foremost a celebration. It's, it's not first and foremost some behaviors we do. And it's not first and foremost some beliefs that we have. What the kingdom is most of all at its core is a, is a participation in the life of God. It's a new kind of life that comes to us and then is, is manifested through us. It's first, 2 Peter 1.4, we are participants in the divine nature. And see, God created us, as we've said here before, uh, with a hunger for unsurpassable worth and, and significance and security. We all need that. We need to be loved. We hunger for that, as we sang about uh, earlier. And God made us with that need because he wants to pour his whole self into us to satisfy us. And then we become little mirrors, as it were, that reflect that. That's, that's God's, God, God's arrangement for everything. If we're not getting that need met from God, we invariably and necessarily, unavoidably, try to get it met from some other source. So we use people and things to try to meet that need. We all need to feel significant and worthwhile and important to somebody. And we need to feel like, like our life counts and we need to feel secure. That's just what it is to be human. And if God's not meeting that need, well, then we try to use other people and other things and our achievements and our possessions and all sorts of silly stuff to try to feel fully alive. And it never works, but we keep on trying. And then we enter into this bondage state that the Bible calls the flesh. And then we enter, enter into the feeding frenzy of conflict, which is the human race. Because everybody's scra scraping for a morsel of worth and value and security, and there's only so many resources to go around. And the reason why history's been largely a history of bloodshed is because of that. People are fighting for their little idolatrous crumbs of worth when all the while God wants to give it to us for free. Now, how do we go about experiencing this fullness of life? Because everything hangs on this. You can try all you want to live out the gospel and try you know, to, to, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, but you will invariably be an idolater, if only a religious idolater, which is the worst kind, by the way. But you'll be a, an idolater so long as your soul is hungry. How do we get full? And how can imaginative spirituality be used in that? Now, I'm not going to give a formula here. There are no formulas. I don't believe in formulas. There are principles. There are teachings. But there's no magic bullet or anything like that. And so, really, I would encourage all of the spiritual disciplines as ways of helping us position ourselves to receive God's fullness of life. All the disciplines, uh, including service and hospitality and fasting and, and, and prayer and solitude. And, and you know, there, there's just a number of, of spiritual disciplines. Read Richard Foster's Celebrating Discipline or Dallas Willard's The Spirit of the Disciplines if you want to find out more about that. All of them should be practiced. They're all good ways of positioning ourselves to receive more deeply the fullness of life that comes from God. But I'm also convinced that imaginative spirituality, I, at least I find, is the most powerful way that I keep going back to the source to get all my life and value from God. What I want to do here is share real briefly, very briefly, three exercises that I do that I find to be very helpful um, in, 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 in experiencing the fullness of life that comes from God. Because remember, it's not about information. You can know that you ought to be getting all your life from God, and it won't do you a bit of good. Uh, it's not what you know that determines the direction of your life. It's what you experience as real. So how do we experience this? 
And I find imaginative spirituality to be very, very powerful in this. Three exercises. I'm going to describe two of them, and then we're going to end by practicing the, uh, the last one. One, and, and just for memory purposes, I gave titles to these. So the first one I could call Resting in Christ. And this is one I've, I've spoken of before in the series. It's one I've written about in the book Seeing is Believing, and I called it Resting in Christ in that book. Um, and so I can review this one very, very, very quickly. But it's just where you go and meet the Lord. Turn, I, I encourage you to turn off the lights. At least it tends to work better for most people. If you turn off the lights in a room, get alone. It tends to work best for most people if you put on some nice, beautiful music, because that affects us, uh, opens us up, it tends to open us up. And so the animates music that we've had available is, is helpful in that respect. And then you envision the place, which is simply a place that you can easily access in a very vivid way. Often it's a memory, but it doesn't have to be. Some people said, is it okay if I envision you know, uh, running or an activity? And it, There's no rules on this. Say it, whatever, however the Lord leads you, you know, go with it if it works. What works for one person doesn't work for another. Uh, but, but envision a place. And then I, I just encounter the Lord using all five senses as much as possible. Don't make it into a contest, but, but just to try to experience the Lord as concretely as possible. And there... I often, on a mountaintop or in the middle of the woods in my oval of light, that is sort of the space I go to a lot, in the inner sanctum, I hear and see and sense the presence of God. And I just hear, and I encourage you to hear him say to you all the things that he said about you in Scripture. But now he, he uses your name. And he looks at you when he says it. And he expresses it in, 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 in a lot of different ways. But here is where you are encountering the life that you were created for. I've loved you with an everlasting love, Greg. You are more precious to me than you can imagine. If you were the only, if you were the only individual that I ever created, I, I wouldn't love you any more than I do right now. And I don't know why, but that's just an important one for me to hear. It's like, am, am I special? I guess that's what I need to know. And, and, and he, he will say, I know you need security. Everyone does. But you need to know that all the threats to your life or your security, those are all just temporary, but nothing will separate you from my love. And that will go on forever and ever and ever. And, 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 and drink deeply of that security. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I will never leave you or forsake you. I am in you. My arms are always around you. Uh, my affection is always towards you. I sing and dance over you. And, I, 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 and, and just drink that in. Rest, rest. In his love, you are here encountering the one who incarnates perfect, unsurpassable, and wavering love, and just receive it, hear it, and just enjoy that. Just enjoy, just drink deeply from that well. You were created to hear those words. And sometimes the Lord might then bring you someplace to be healed. We've talked about that in the Animate series. Sometimes the Lord maybe will reveal something. This is at least how it happens with me. Uh, some aspect of my life that maybe I'm getting too much life from. Something that, it's one thing to enjoy something, but it's another thing to make it a source of life, and we very easily become idolaters. And the Lord will kind of bring that up and just say, you know what, what you're hungry for, Greg, you're trying to get from that, but that's not going to work. What you're really hungry for is me. Just rest in my love. So spend time regularly resting in Christ, finding the place, darkening the room, putting on some music, and drink deeply from that. And you'll find that as that becomes central to who you are, the, the idolatry just sort of disappears. You don't need it anymore. Whereas if you're trying to get rid of it, but you're not getting that life, it's impossible. You'll always fall back. You may exchange your idols, but you can't get free of idolatry. Go back to your source of life. Second, here's an exercise that I find I want to share. Uh, and it comes in a lot of different forms, but I, I, I could call this drowning in God's love. And try this sometime. Uh, envision God, God's love for you like a waterfall. Like an enormous waterfall. It looks something like this. Watch this. This is God's love. And uh, can you keep my microphone on by any chance? Yeah, I want to talk about this. God's love from all eternity has been, has been flowing like a, like, like a giant waterfall with tonnage of it just flows. God is love. He's just constantly is pouring his love. 
And I sometimes envision God's love as this ceaseless, relentless, unwavering, giant waterfall. And I am a little pebble at the bottom of the thing. And, and I in, put myself in the position looking up at this waterfall coming down on me. Just envision this. God's love just is pouring on you. I love you. I died for you. You're, you're my child. You're my son. You're my bride. I give my life for you. Because he wants to pour him whole, his whole self, his whole being into you to fill you up. And I'm the little pebble and I just let myself get drowned in that love.